Welcome to our first Ask the Expert session, sponsored by the National Osteoporosis Foundation. I'm Judy Chandler, a health educator with the National Osteoporosis Foundation. As you may know, calcium and vitamin D are important for our bones. However, there are also many vitamins, minerals, and foods that are also important. During this session, we'll look at some of these and how they affect our bones. Our expert who will answer our questions today is Dr. Felicia Cosman, Clinical Director for the National Osteoporosis Foundation. Hello, Dr. Cosman. Looking forward to this interview today. Dr. Cosman, can you tell us about minerals and vitamins that help keep our bones healthy? Sure. Uh, we know that there are lots of vitamins and minerals in different foods that are important for the optimal skeletal health. Uh, we know, for example, that eating a diet high in fruits and vegetables is likely to help optimize the uh, bone density and the health of our bones. But we're not sure what ingredient within the fruits and vegetables is the most important one to look at. So we need, or the most important one to, to get enough of. So what we're advocating is that people get a healthy diet rich in fruits and vegetables uh, for bone health, which is consistent, of course, with what we're recommending for uh, prevention of heart disease and general health overall. Uh, but what we're not recommending is that people take a lot of specific supplements containing uh, specific vitamins because we don't know which of these ingredients is most important. Uh, beyond calcium and vitamin D in most normal, healthy individuals, we don't recommend additional vitamin or mineral supplementation. Just a good, healthy diet with lots of fruits and vegetables. Thank you. Can soft drinks or car carbonated drinks also affect our bones? Well, carbonated beverages, uh, one problem with them is that uh, people tend to drink these instead of drinking uh, calcium-rich uh, drinks, such as milk, for example. So that's one of the issues. Uh, but if you get enough calcium in your diet through foods or through supplements if necessary, most carbonated beverages are not going to produce a detrimental effect on skeletal health. The one exception, perhaps, is the cola, uh, whether it's uh, sugar-containing or the diet colas, uh, because there may be other ingredients within the colas that can actually uh, exacerbate uh, bone loss or put us into negative uh, calcium balance, make us lose calcium, that is. So we want to try to uh, limit uh, cola consumption to fewer than about seven drinks per week or one drink per day. There are some people who have a really big cola habit uh, where they consume, uh, you know, multiple colas every day, and that's probably not really good for bone health. What about coffee and tea? Well, uh, coffee uh, and tea both contain some caffeine. Uh, they have minimal effects on calcium absorption. And with a, a good calcium-rich diet, uh, these uh, caffeinated beverages are really not likely to produce much of an impact on bone health. Nevertheless, we, we don't want to go to excess, uh, particularly with, caf with coffee, which contains a higher dose of caffeine than tea. Uh, but certainly, a few cups of coffee per day uh, are not going to be detrimental to bone. We know that too much salt can cause problems for people with high blood pressure and heart disease. Is too much salt a problem for our bones? Yes, too much salt is, is also not good for calcium balance. In this case, uh, the salt causes the excretion of calcium from uh, the kidney or into the urine uh, and can put us into to negative calcium balance. And it's difficult to make up for that, even with a good calcium-containing uh, uh, diet. In general, if you get about 1,200 milligrams a day, which is our target, uh, through diet and uh, supplements if necessary, uh, even uh, moderately high high salt intakes are not going to be much of a problem, but we like to avoid uh, excessive salt intakes for other uh, health uh, aspects as well. Does protein help our bones in any way? Well, proteins needed uh, for some uh, populations particularly, uh, for example, older individuals and, and those who have had hip fractures, uh, for example, uh, may be protein deficient. And several studies have shown that if protein is supplemented into the diet or added to the diet, uh, people will recover better from a hip fracture. So uh, certain people who are protein deficient need to enhance their protein intake. Young individuals also. 
uh, need to get enough protein in order to maximize bone mass at the peak, which occurs somewhere in our early 20s. Uh, in general, uh, we, we don't have problems getting too much protein with most people who are uh, in young adulthood or in, in middle age. It's, it's more people on the, the opposite ends of the spectrum. Uh, some people may be overdoing protein, particularly uh, animal proteins, uh, and it looks like if you have a very high protein intake, especially through uh, animal or meat proteins, not dairy proteins, but animal proteins, it may cause a little bit of an acid buildup in the body, and acid uh, may increase the amount of bone degradation, uh, so that uh, we want to try to avoid excessive meat protein uh, in the diet. Is it true that wheat bran prevents our bodies from absorbing calcium, and can you give some examples of some foods with wheat bran? Uh, well, wheat bran, which is contained, uh, for example, in uh, high-fiber-containing uh, cereals, uh, can impair calcium absorption a little bit. But this is not uh, going to have a big impact on, on calcium absorption or calcium balance. And so I, I don't think it's something that we need to consider. And certainly increasing uh, fiber uh, and wheat bran in our diets is, is generally a very healthful measure. So we're, we're not going to recommend that people uh, limit it. Uh, and as long as you're getting the target calcium intake, uh, I don't think it's going to be a significant issue on skeletal health. Uh, does drinking alcohol either help or harm our bones? Uh, alcohol is, is kind of a double-edged uh, sword, and um, this is true for bone as it is with um, certain other diseases, like heart disease, for example, where a little bit of alcohol is actually good for our bones, uh, but a lot of alcohol is bad. And we don't have an exact uh, line uh, to draw between what's good and what's bad. Uh, for most women, we don't want to exceed one to two alcohol-containing beverages uh, or one to two alcohol units per day. Uh, for uh, men, maybe that's two to three alcohol-containing beverages uh, per day. Uh, beyond that is probably bad for health overall and maybe bad for bone. Uh, but less than that or equal to that may actually benefit uh, the, uh, the bone density and bone health. And finally, how does smoking affect our bones? Well, smoking uh, can accelerate the metabolism of whatever estrogen is, is still being made in the body, even in you know, postmenopausal women. Some estrogen is being made, and, and metabolizing it faster may have a negative impact. Uh, smoking is also often associated with reduced physical activity levels, and we know that reduced physical activity is bad for bone health. Uh, and then smoking may have some uh, direct effects on the uh, bone cells and uh, reduce the efficiency of bone formation. Uh, during the normal renewal process that's going on throughout our lives where bone is broken down and, and reformed. So smoking can act in multiple ways uh, to have a negative impact on, on bone health, and it's just another reason uh, to try to encourage smoking cessation. If a woman, for example, finds out that she has osteoporosis and decides to stop smoking, will her bones improve? Let's say she's 60 years old and has smoked for 30 years, and now she completely stops. There aren't that many studies looking at this, but yes, we do think uh, certainly that bone density will improve. And there are some studies that show that fracture risk, and particularly hip fracture risk, will go down uh, some within a few years of stopping smoking. So yes, uh, is certainly uh, there is evidence that sm stopping smoking will benefit bone health. Thank you, Dr. Cosman, for taking the time out to speak with us today. You're very welcome.